Battle Gate. I'm coming for you. Uh. I think we're going in that small little inlet right there. I can see why it's called Hell Gate. Atlanta home and although we would love to explore Georgia and this area a lot more in depth um, with like kayaks and taking tours and seeing all these islands we also know that this is the season for these gnats so we're just trying to make our way to the areas that we really want to explore a bit more deeply faster and we don't move that fast so that's kind of why we've been having these long travel days and we've timed it so that way we go through it at high tide but it is extremely narrow again and basically has the channel and then half a foot on either side so there's probably about zero room for air so we need to be very focused um yeah very focused so we planned out the perfect time to hit this. It is like almost high tide right now. And uh, so we should have a little bit extra margin for air because of course we need it. I think we're going in that small little inlet right there. I can see why it's called Hell Gates. I think this guy might be trying to uh, yeah. pass you. Just stay. This is the big one that's still behind. Uh, approaching Hell Gate. Southern Atlantic, this is Devin. Howdy, Captain. Do you want to pass us before we uh, head into the crossing? Yeah, that's correct. If you want to slow down, I can slow down too. Give you a smooth pass. Okay. Hey, Devin, you want to pass us or not? That'll work with us. Uh, please proceed. They, I think they passed us uh, yesterday. Yeah, I think they did too. Are you just uh, are you idling? I'm Go a little slower. Is that possible? I mean, I'm at 10. Give them some more time. Give them some more time. The boat's still yeah, far away from us. Yeah, they did pass us. They were the ones who, like, were going to cross over that shoal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Southern latitudes, right? Yeah. Southern latitudes, mate! Alright, now cut. Oh, okay. Keep cutting. 
keep cutting? Yeah. And, uh, Good. Uh, even out. They're general markers, but they're so close together. They are so close together. And it looks like, yeah, you're doing great. You're right in the channel right now. Yeah, I think I need to get over just a little bit, and then should be good. It doesn't look like hell. It actually looks pretty nice, but it is high tide. Yeah. So that yeah. half a foot that's right off the channel is actually seven or six, no, it's seven okay. feet. The tide's six and a half feet right now. So we have one more marker, one more bend. We're almost, are we through it now? Almost. I think we just have to get past this like shoaly area right here where the grass is. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I don't know if we've ever explained what a shoal is to the vlog, but a shoal is like an area in the waterway that you can, you can run aground easily because uh, it's very shallow and it might not look shallow so something like this like right over here we have grass coming out of the water if the grass wasn't there you might think it's just just as deep as everywhere else but you can tell like it's pretty much the ground yeah I think we did it hey, hey good job good job wow look at that Hell's Gate. Good job, man. So we are now approaching Savannah, which is the next big city on our Great Loop. And we're in Burnside River, and we just got an announcement that there are manatees currently migrating in the river. So we're gonna go extra slow and make sure that we don't impact any manatees that are in the area. So manatees aren't fast enough to really move out of the way of a powerboat. So we're going pretty slow so that way if they do see us coming or when they do see us coming, if they're in our way, they'll be able to move. Uh, because we can't really see them all the time from above the water, but they do come up every couple of minutes for air. So we will see them then. And they are really pretty. So far it's worked out well, um, but some of the, the wakes of various boats are massive and it really, really rocks our boat. And we also learned that people, other boats have stabilizers, which is a, a mechanism 
somewhere in the boat that helps stabilize the boat from these oncoming wakes or waves or whatnot. And uh, we don't have that. We don't have that luxury. So we turn into, our, into people's wakes. It is very pretty here in this river alongside Savannah. Savannah is just a couple miles inland that way. So this river just comes right next to Savannah and even closer towards the mouth of the river, uh, which we'll be in in a few days uh, after we stay here and explore. Howdy, fishermen. Well, as you can see, we are no longer cruising. We got into Savannah, it was really pretty, and we're, we were trying to find our anchorage for the evening. And we just need to stop over for one night because tomorrow we're going to a dock because you know, we have to do laundry and all those kind of things that you do that you can't do on the boat. You get food, that kind of stuff. So anyway, we were trying to find this anchorage. Things got really hectic really fast. The wind and the current are going the same direction from where we are. And so when we tried to drop our anchor, we were drifting into a crab pox. We didn't, drag, we didn't drop our anchor fast enough. And then when we tried to raise our anchor, it wouldn't pull up because the Jen found out that the chain was getting like all clogged and the V-birth like where it comes in. And so it was just a very, very stressful 20 minutes. And uh, we ended up pulling the anchor. I was holding the anchor up with my hands. Jen was navigating the boat and then we were switching around, switching. Uh, Jen fixed the anchor clog and I pulled up the anchor manually because it just wouldn't come out. And then we thought the anchor was hitting the front of the boat because it's just hanging at that right position. Anyway, you could tell it was very stressful. We didn't film any of it. We ended up getting the anchor up, moving to a good spot, and then anchoring. And now our anchor, that was about 20 minutes ago, and our anchor has held so far. We're like in about 12 knots of wind. But the, the fast thing is the current right here because the tidal shift today is seven feet. And tomorrow the tidal shift is eight feet. So these, are, these tidal changes bring with them insane currents. So our boat's just being like pulled right now, but our anchor is, ho is holding, and we're gonna monitor it for the next few hours. And while we do that, we're going to work and be highly attuned to our anchor. We have our anchor alarm on, and um, check this little girl for, for ticks from uh, Cumberland Island, because she's feeling kind of hot. So we're gonna do some doggy checkup. These gnats that have been in like the coastal areas of Georgia are so annoying. We, I've been, my strategy has been to cover up throughout most of the day so that way I can't get bit. But the night that they got in, into our cabin, it was just murderous. Oh my gosh. And now they itch like crazy. So Elliot and I are constantly itching. And uh, yeah, there's just, like for such a small little thing they do so much damage and they hurt so bad <laughs> like I don't understand how such a small little thing can hurt so bad I don't get it like I, I, I seriously don't they are this big as you can hear our anchor alarm is going off this anchor is just really not the best and we have a ton of wind and tide affecting our boat at one time. So our boat's kind of going, we think we might be dragging anchor, we're not sure just yet. But I think we're going to end the vlog here and uh, hopefully we have a better night than we've had the last few hours. We need a coin for passage. 
Oh, oh there it is. Wow. wow. That thing is huge. I don't think it's a dog, babe. I don't think it really responds. Hey, don't they whistle in the water? Yeah, but it's like echolocation or something like that. It's what? I see it. I'm not going to hit it. <laughs> 